Happy New Year everybody for 2016, it's January the 5th. Uh, I'm doing a couple of videos today and I'm going to be putting them on my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. So, as you know, I love my films. My name is Ernie and I hope you like what I've got to show you. First up, I ordered this as a Christmas present. It arrived just before Christmas but I've not had a chance to do a video. So I thought I would do this little video. This is of one of my heroes, big, big admirer of this guy, ever since I was the eye to a grasshopper, as they say. We're talking about the fantastic, he's 85, I think, 86 years old. He's still directing films. We are talking about the legend Clint Eastwood. Now, what I've got there, I'll do the unboxing in a minute, is the... Eight film set Blu-ray of Clint Eastwood's Universal Pictures era. We know he works with Warner Brothers and 95% of the time all his films are made through Warner Brothers and Malpaso Film Company, which is Clint Eastwood's very own film company. Now, as I said, I've been an admirer of Clint Eastwood for, oh, since I can remember. I remember watching Dirty Harry as a child and, whoa. That was it. In the 80s, I joined the Clint Eastwood Appreciation Society. I used to have all his films. I've still got all his films, but I used to have them all on video. I had posters everywhere in the walls, everything. I love Clint Eastwood. I think he's a, a legend. A bona fide Hollywood legend. He's probably the biggest star in the world at the moment. On scale of what he's done film-wise and everything that's living. Obviously, Kirk Douglas is still alive and other people like that, but Clint's the man. I'm going to unbox this. As I said, this is an 8-disc Blu-ray set of Clint Eastwood's Universal movies. So, bear with me, as they say. I've uh, made a little slit into it. I've not opened this myself either, so... Surprising myself, as they say. There's some of it gone off. I'll just do this quickly. There we go. We'll wrap that. And it comes in a nice white box, as you can see. That's all the information about all the movies that he's done. All of that there, as you can see. And then we'll take the lid off, which is, there we go, nice white lid on top. And it's Clint Eastwood again. And this is what you see inside. Eight Blu-rays, all oh, pretty smart. There's Coogan's Bluff, Two Meals for Sister Sarah, The Beguiled, Play Misty for Me, Joe Kid, High Plains Drifter, Reezy, and The Iger Sanction. Very happy to have all these in a set. And I got these from Amazon, and would you believe I only paid £26, including posters and packaging. Bargain. Absolute bargain. So we're going to start off with... Coogan's Bluff. This is what you'll call the pre-runner to a television show in the early 70s called McLeod, which starred Dennis Weaver. Clint Eastwood plays a small town, as in small Arizona town desert, police officer who, dead tiny in the mountains and everything, and he has to go to the big city to bring in a killer. So obviously he's not used to the big city and it's set in the late 60s. It's a Don Siegel film, which he worked with a lot in them days. Oh, the only thing missing from the Universal set here, because I think it was a Paramount film, is Escape Mark of Trash, but I've got that on another video. But this is a pretty good film. Then he did another film, again, this is another Don Siegel one. Two Meals for Sister Sarah, starring Clint Eastwood and Shirley MacLaine. Clint Eastwood's like a drifter again in the cowboy towns and he meets up with this lady who he thinks is a nun. She comes across as a nun and she's basically is a woman of the night. And between him and her, it's a comedy western but it's quite good. They have to blow up this bridge to stop this Mexican train getting across into America. Good old fashioned fun, really, really good. Then he made another film with his old favourite. Is it another Don Siegel one? 
Yeah, another Don Siegel. This is the Beguiled. Um, Clint Eastwood plays a Confederate soldier in the American Civil War. And um, he basically gets injured. And he gets took into this huge mansion in the middle of the, what we'll call the Swamplands in America. Which has been run by this woman and a load of these girls. As in teenage young ladies and everything. And he, while he's recovering from his injuries... One of the girls takes a fancy to him, but it's a very dark, dark, dark thriller because even though he's trying to recover, they're making him stay longer by basically poisoning him slowly. And it's a really, really good thriller. If you like a good film, The Beguiled is one of Clint's good ones from his early days. That's The Beguiled. Next up, my favourite, well, my first favourite of the whole set is... Lay Misty for me. This is Clint Eastwood again, and this is his directorial debut. It's his first film he directed, produced by Don Siegel and everyone at Universal. Jessica Walters is in it, and Donna Mills. Now, the story is Clint Eastwood plays a DJ in Carmel in America, a small town by the California coast, who's going out with Donna Mills. They have like an open relationship. They're not 100% steady. And there's a lady played by Jessica Walters. Keeps ringing up every night when he plays his late night jazz radio show. And keeps asking him to play Misty. Which is a song. Hence the title, Play Misty for me. Now, she basically starts stalking him. And I won't give any more away, but... She is completely and utterly bonkers, deranged bonkers. Now, years later in 1987, Paramount Pictures, Adrian Lynn, Michael Douglas, Glenn Close made a film called Fatal Attraction. Now, it was debated in Hollywood, nearly went to court and everything, but they were saying that Fatal Attraction is basically a rip-off of play Misty for me. So as everyone knows, the bunny boiler slogan, Glenn Close gets off with Michael Douglas and then stalks him and completely and utterly deranged stalks him. Well, this is virtually identical. And I won't give any more away, but Play Misty for Me is a great film. And don't forget, this was nearly 20 years before Fatal Attraction. So if you ever watch this, compare it with Fatal Attraction and look at the similarities great film next up is another western of clint eastwood's joe kidd directed by john sturgis it's another small town western where clint plays a drifter and he has to stop a load of land barons and taking over this mexican town it's not bad it's quite fun john saxon who was in enter the dragon and night on old street one is also in this very young in it as well it's not a bad little film it's a great scene in a jail cell where Clint Eastwood hits a man with his pan and it's absolutely brilliant. Well, there you go. Next up is another Clint Eastwood's ones, High Plains Drifter. Great, great film. Another Drifter film has in title. He drives in, he rides into a small town and it's being overrun by baddies and everything. And Clint Eastwood, is he the devil or is he not the devil? It's a good, good, good classic Clint movie. If you like your Clint's, again, another good one. That's how plays Drifter. Then we've got Clint Eastwood's second directorial film. He doesn't star in this one. This stars William Holden, Roger Carmel, Joanne Hodgkins and Jane Smith Jackson. This is called Breeze. It's set in San Francisco in the hippie era, the late 60s, where the title of the film, Breeze, a young girl, Ends up having an affair with a married middle-aged man, or well, late 50s. And the man basically thinks he's he's won the lottery in his head because this young girl's attracted to him and everything. But it's how age differences perceive each other and how their friend, her friends think that, is she a gold digger? Is she after his money? He thinks she loves him. Does she love him? No one knows. It's quite a good little 
drama. I enjoy Breezy. It's not very rarely show and tell either. And lastly, but not leastly, we've got the Iger Sanction, which is great. If you ever seen Vertical Limit with Chris O'Donnell and Bill Paxton, this was done way before this. This was done in the 70s. Clint Eastwood plays a hitman CIA operative who has to join an expedition climbing the Iger. But one of the team is a murderer and Clint Eastwood has to mm. sort them out, basically, and try and get rid of them. Great film. If you're scared of heights, it's quite frightening. And most of it was filmed on the Iger. So there you go. That's my little Clint Eastwood collection of his Universal films. Hope you like it. And uh, I'll do some more soon. Coming up soon is my pickups for January that have just arrived. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you all soon. Bye from Ernie.